Welcome back. So now that we have Homestead set up, it's time to learn how to work with it. I'll start with the configuration file again. So in this hidden Homestead folder here, I'll open up this YAML file. And here, well, we already had a look at it in the last video. Most of this configuration is pretty straightforward. We got our IP address at the top. We can configure the resources this virtual machine should have. The provider, if you're using VirtualBox or VMware, then all well, these keys and this authorization stuff should work. This basically points towards your SSH keys folder, this hidden folder, and will make sure that you can easily connect to your virtual machine through SSH. And if you should have problems there, this might stem from multiple sources to be honest and best is to google for laravel homestead with your operating system and then SHA key problem or something like this and you will probably find a lot of solutions to possible problems here however this should not need any changes by default now the folders and sites keys i talked about them in the last video and this allows you to well, map certain folders to be shared on your Vagrant machine. And here I follow the approach where I have my root folder mapped to a root folder on my machine. Now, of course, I could map multiple folders here and have each of my projects being mapped to a different, let's say, project folder on my Vagrant machine or on my virtual box. But I don't like this. I will like this root project setup, but you may choose whichever pro approach works for you. Now on sites, we then make sure that we can access our projects from our local browser. And we do this by mapping basically the URL here to, um, to our path, to our public folder of the specific project we want to access through this URL. So important, this path here, is to be seen on our virtual machine. So not our path on our local machine, but the path on the virtual machine. And therefore this target here, this two path always has to be included here, of course, since this is where we start on the virtual machine. And then this path is derived from your local machine since there, local and virtual machine are equal, since this is exactly what we sync here. The last configuration here allows us to define which databases we want Vagrant to set up when starting this new box. And by default, we only have one, Homestead. Now we may add additional ones here, but keep in mind those databases will be empty at the beginning, but with Laravel migrations, you can of course quickly get them into the state where you want them to have. And as I said, this configuration here easily allows you to add uh, another database, if I could type like this. Now the commented out uh, stuff here doesn't need changes most of the time. So I, well, will leave this out for now. These are more advanced settings and I have never changed them before, to be honest. So I'll save this and close this file. And this is the configuration we have here. I explained before that we have a possibility of shutting down our virtual machine. And with Vagrant, we can do this with two ways. With Vagrant Destroy, we will actually do what the name implies, destroy the machine, which means we can easily start up a new one, but all the data on the machine, for example, in the database will be lost. The new one though will, as this is the main idea of Vagrant, have the exact same configuration as the old one, the configuration of this Homestead box and our config file. If we want to keep the data around, but still want to free up some resources, for example, we may use Vagrant Halt to halt our machine. This will not destroy it, the data will persist, but it is, well, shut down or paused. We can, in both cases, bring up the, well, paused or a new machine with Vagrant Up, and it will automatically decide what to do as it knows if a machine was halted or destroyed just that you know how to manage your machines. In my Homestead folder where I ran Vagrant up, I can 
SSH into the virtual machine by running Vagrant SSH. And with SSH SSHing into it, I mean that I am now in my command line inside this virtual machine. So all the commands I run here are not run on my local computer, but inside the virtual machine. Why is this important? Because for example, it's very important when running our PHP artisan commands, especially the database related ones. Since those commands need access to the database, we have to run them on the virtual machine since there is the place where our database lives. It's not on our local machine. Therefore, for example, PHP artisan migrate won't work on our local machine since it would try to migrate this file into our local MySQL database, which we probably don't have or have not set up the way we need it. Therefore, for this to work correctly, we have to run such commands on the virtual machine. Now, once I SSH'd into this, let's see where we are. We're right at the root level where we have this code folder. Remember, that's the folder where we mapped our local files to. So let's have a look into this folder. There you see exactly the same folder structure as I have here in this PHP folder. I got projects, tutorials, homestead, and these are the three folders, folders I have here. If I go into tutorials and then YouTube, you can see I have my Laravel basics folder here. And inside this Laravel basics folder, I could now run my PHP artisan commands like I would on my local machine if I were developing there. Of course, you have to be in the project folder in the specific project, but of course you also have to be on your local machine for this to work. This is really important to keep in mind as you will get quite strange errors, mostly saying that they can't connect to database if you try to run database related commands on your local machine. Just stressing this because these are errors everyone will have experienced because he both did not think about it, did not realize he's not in the local or in the virtual machine, but on the local machine. And therefore this is a key error source. And I want to point this out. Now with this clear, I will exit just by typing exit. So I'm back on my local machine now in the terminal and now I can run Vagrant destroy. But before I do this, I want to show you how you can access your virtual machine database from your local machine. Now I, I use SQL Pro for this, but you may use whichever tool you want. And well, I already got it set up here, but basically how you connect us, you choose standard here, not SSH, standard, because Laravel Homestead will automatically forward some ports so that you can access them from your local machine easily. One of these ports is this port 30, 33060. This is the database port and therefore on our local machine we may just access our well local host. The homestead is homestead is the default user of the database um, on your homestead machine, your virtual machine, and the password will be secret, all lowercase. Now if we click connect, you see we're right inside. And here is the home state database that is automatically generated because it is set up this way in the homestead YAML file. So this is how you can quickly connect to your database from your local host, just because Laravel Homestead automatically forwards some ports. And this is really the key configuration or usage part I want to talk about. I strongly recommend the official documentation here for more information about how to configure certain things and what the different configuration keys in the Homestead YAML file mean. But I think with this, you should be good to go and you should be able to set this up and use it as your day-to-day -day development environment.